bottom line up front. To learn Morse code using Learn CW Online, first, create an account. Change the CW settings to a character speed of 20, effective speed to as fast as you can, five words per minute is good to start, and a tone to a pleasing frequency. I like 630 hertz. Add a two second start delay to add dead air at the start of each lesson so you can get ready to decode. Leave everything else the same. Start with lesson one, which teaches K and M. Keep doing the lesson until you have less than 10% errors, and then add a new letter by going on to the next lesson. Learn to ignore characters you don't immediately recognize. Quickly move on so you don't miss the rest of the code group. Once you get to around lesson 26, start learning words with word training. Change speed to 20, minimum character speed to five, and characters from lesson 26. Set a maximum length to something like two or three to learn short common words first. Select fixed speed if you want to keep LCWO from increasing the speed as you get words correct. Intersperse word and character training, emphasizing more time on character training until you get through all 40 lessons. This will take at least two months of daily practice, 10 minutes every day. Don't fret if you miss a day or two, just get back on the saddle. Consistency is key here. Once you're through all 40 lessons, work on improving your speed. Do code group lessons, increasing effective words per minute by one every time you pass a lesson with less than 10% error. Every other lesson, use plain text, word, call sign, and QTC training to begin building a vocabulary of whole Morse code words. Never ever use mnemonics, charts, cheat sheets, or any other trick you might find on the internet. Morse code is a language of audio. Using visual or memory cues might help you learn characters fast, but it will hinder your progress towards proficiency. Finally, get on the air. If you are too afraid to call CQs yourself, try answering someone else's CQ in something like a contest or a net. Listen to real radio, either with your own radio or a web SDR, to learn the sounds of the ionosphere. And finally, never stop. And if that was too fast for you, watch the rest of the video, and hopefully it will be all clear to you in the end. A really common question I see on the internet uh, is how do I learn Morse code? And this has been going up and up and up as COVID-19 has forced people to stay inside longer and longer and longer. People are looking for something to do. I guess learning Morse code is something to do. So why not learn Morse code? But I have noticed that like on Google Trends, the LCWO publishes their own statistics on places like Reddit, QRZ, email forums. People are asking, how do I learn Morse code? Um, people are trying to get back into it. You know, how do, how do I get past a, a certain uh, like 15 words per minute? How do I get faster? How do I get better? And uh, I'm here to show you how uh, using LearnCW Online um, in a short, concise little video. So stay tuned. Welcome to LearnCWOnline.net. Learn Morse Code or CW Online is a place to learn Morse code. It was created by uh, Fabian Kurz, DJ1YFK, who is a high-speed uh, Morse code dude. He um, is a competitor at, in terms of how fast, and he uses uh, things like Learn CW Online to improve his own speed. So first, create an account. That's pretty straightforward. <laughs> That's funny, it gives you the answer. And then once you've created an account, you can log in. Once you've logged in, this is what you see. No attempts, no nothing, and you can start immediately by going to the introduction. It informs you uh, how it educates, starting with the letters K and M. It uses the Coke method, which is a list of characters, which I guess some, someone named Coke has figured out to be the best arrangement of letters to learn. And you start by listening to the letter K and listening to the letter M. And as you learn the characters, it'll send five uh, consecutive characters, like as you see, MMK, MMK, KK, MMK, you know, and then go on and so on and so forth. And you type in each of those characters like so. But before I do that, if that pitch was too high for you, which it is for me, you can change that and change CW settings. I will change the pitch to 650 hertz, which are actually 630 hertz, which is my favorite, and leave every, everything else the same. You want to note that you want to leave the character speed as high as you can possibly manage. Um, 20 is a good place to start. 25 is even better. Um, but the effective speed, that can stay low. And I recommend you start at a 10, and if that's too fast, reduce the effective speed, but do not reduce the character speed. You want to add a start delay of like two or three seconds so that you're not overwhelmed at the very beginning. When you hit submit, play a sample at the bottom of the page. And then there you can hear what it sounds like. Now you can go back to lessons and it already opens you up right here. You have the letters K, which you can uh, review here, or M, which you can review here. And then once you click play, it will start the uh, lesson and for the uh, amount of time that you have set, I think for five minutes, 
and for one whole minute it will send K's and M's in five character groups which you will type down like so. If you mess up a letter, it's okay. Don't fret, just ignore it. Never ever try to think of what was that letter? What was that letter? I'm trying to remember what that letter was. I think it was a da-da-da, -da -da, but it might have been a da-da. -da -da. By that time that you've figured it out or you're trying to figure out, it's already progressed many, many characters. So just let it go and move on to the next one as soon as you possibly can. This reduces errors, and it turns out with context, you might not even need that character in an actual real QSO. And after a minute, it completes, and you can click check result. Now it'll show your grade. But you notice like I had all these perfect, and then I started messing up and I started messing up some more, and then finally I messed up a little more, and my error rate is 16%, um, with the Levenstein errors of 15.3%. I think the Levenstein is a closer error ratio that takes into account things like forgotten character groups. Uh, but once this goes under 10%, here's what happens. I got one error, but I got an error rate of only 1.5%. Now it says, good, your accuracy is better than 90%. You may want to try the next lesson. Uh, this is what the Coke method is. Uh, once you arrive at 10% accuracy, you can now add a new character, but never add another character until you're less than 10% accuracy or else you're just going to fry your brain. And even at this point, your brain might be fried. To me, actually, the K's and M's all are starting to kind of meld together, which is totally normal. Um, and if this is too fast for you, one thing you can do is always slow down. Going to CW settings, changing the effective speed to something like five words per minute, click submit, and now you have a little more time to think about it. As you see. So back to the lessons, I got 10% uh, error. I got less than 10% error, um, better than 90% accuracy, in other words. And now I can change to lesson two, and you do that manually. Um, you can also change the duration if you want to go longer, but I recommend only one minute. And when you click go to lesson two, it adds a new letter, U, and you can click play to listen to that letter. And then it just kind of throws it in there. Okay, now we're done. And you can click check result and you'll see what kind of errors you got. Looks like I didn't quite make it. I got 13.3% error, which means I did worse than 90% accuracy. So that means you continue training, click continue training, and you go back into the same lesson and you keep doing that until you get less than 10% errors. When you do that, uh, it will say you might want to continue. You continue by going to the next lesson. So this is going to take maybe two months, maybe three, maybe less, maybe more, depending on how much time you put into it, how much, uh, maybe if you're a drummer or you're musical, it might come better, it might come faster. Uh, but the real gist, the real like thing to take away is very dedicated, daily, consistently, um, no more than 15 minutes. I would say if you, you do uh, 10 minutes a day, you're doing great. But as long as you keep doing it every day, don't stress out if you miss a day or, or two, just come right back to it and you'll start picking up these letters in no time at all. And you've probably seen, if you're in my YouTube live streams, I did the same thing. I just started having eureka moments that these letters just started coming to my head as I was starting to get halfway through the program. And one thing you never, ever, ever want to do is use mnemonics, use chart. A lot of people, me included, especially for the letter L, have remembered L as a light is lit. Da 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 da. A light is lit. And if you go to, um, if you watch Vsauce's video, he describes all of the mnemonics for all of the letters. B, this is how I remember B. Boot to the head. Boot to the head. C is Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola. And although this is a good way to maybe learn Morse code, it's not a good way to get fast and proficient at Morse code. 
This video is designed to get you on the ham radio Morse code, which means you're going to need to listen and head copy all of the code that you hear, and contesting especially, where call signs are flying at 30, 40 words per minute. Using mnemonics requires a different section of your brain to process and think, what does that sound like? Oh, it sounds like a light is lit. Oh, that's the letter L. But that takes longer than the instant character recognition you get from constant drilling. It's, it's a lot like muscle memory. And honestly, you've probably seen a chart like this, and this is okay to, to, to learn the structure of Morse code and to understand what is A, B, C, and D. And this is also really helpful when you're sending Morse code. But for receiving, this is unnecessary. You want to use the sound of the characters, not the sight, not the feel or the taste or the smell, the sound only. Because if you use any of these other things, it acts like a crutch. It doesn't streamline the brain's process of connecting a letter or a word to a sound. You know what I mean? You've also may or may not seen, have seen a chart like this. This chart just makes my blood boil. It makes no sense at all. It doesn't have consistency with the characters. You, if you remove the actual letters, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why does the W have da da da, there's this thing, and then X has two, like, it's, this is useless. This is not going to help you at all. And then there's this chart. If the last chart made my blood boil, this makes it just vaporize. Okay, I'll give it to you. This chart makes some sense. It's a tree chart, and you're not gonna learn Morse code in one minute using this, but, you might be able to get an intuition if you're given, say, di da da you gotta go, di da da that's a W, okay, great, I made it to W, but like, this chart, it doesn't work with the mental processes. Uh, unless you memorize this perfectly and you can follow this tree at a character rate of hundreds per second, then, then sure, but like, this is not how to learn Morse code. Morse code is an audio language, it's not a visual language. And bar none, the absolute best way to learn Morse code is through the audio of each character. There is no other option. Unless you just want to casually learn Morse code, that's totally fine. But if you want to be proficient at it, if you want to be fast, if you want to have head copy, and if you want to get on a ham radio and have a conversation without stressing about every character and thinking, L, that was the dotted it, that's a light is it, oh, that's the letter L, and then... He's already said everything and he's waiting for your return and you're sitting there embarrassed like, I didn't understand anything you said. So anyway, once you've learned all the characters, what do you do then? So I would say once you're about halfway through the CW course, say a lesson, oh, maybe 26, you've learned a lot of letters. Now you can start to form quite a few words and LCW has a very um, efficient way to do this. If you go to word training, you can use characters from lesson 26 change your uh, character speeds uh, to your uh, liking, and you can pick a language. You can also use CW abbreviations, CWQ codes, and there's a few languages here as well. You can change um, the la maximum length of the word. Let's say I just want to do three letter words, and I'm going to do English, and use a fixed speed because the way this works is it increases the speed as you get the, the words correct and it slows it down as you get them wrong, which is a good way to learn, but we'll just use a fixed speed for now. The minimum character speed to 10 words per minute because the character speed is what you want to go fast and the regular speed back down to 10 words per minute. It's kind of kind of flips. I wish it would be a little more um, verbose, but the character speed is what you want to keep high the speed or the effective speed is what you want to keep low, also known as the Farnsworth speed. You get this chart and once you put your mouse in the text box, you can click enter and it'll start automatically. Ear. I don't know what it sent, but maybe it's jar? Oh, no. If you get distracted, and you didn't hear any of the characters at all, you can use the period key to repeat it. Un. So let's say you've learned all of the letters. You're at lesson 40 now. It's been a few months, maybe, maybe three months. Um, you're getting very good at decoding all the letters at the, at the speed you are at. Now the name of the game is twofold. First of all, you want to increase the effective speed bit by bit so you get faster. Secondly, you want to start learning words as full sounds. And what I mean by that, go back into word training and increase the speed of words even faster than what you're comfortable with. Um, because before you were doing code groups which are random, and it's very hard to make 
words out of random characters, but words have their own feel to them. For example, the word test. Like a lot of hams call CQ test to say, I'm calling CQ in a contest. And they go, and to me, that da 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 is just naturally the word test. I've also learned in my one of my uh, live streams that the word geo, like geo metro or um, geography, sounds like it has this kind of cool beat to it. Da 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 da. da. And then my own call sign, it's got a cool beat to it too. And also, if you haven't learned your call sign by this point, I would recommend highly getting very proficient with your call sign, your name, and your city and state. My name, even though it doesn't really have a particular rhythm, I just know how to send it perfectly every time, and I know what it sounds like perfectly every time because I've listened to that for such a long time. And so the whole group of my name, Sterling, just sounds like one continuous sound. And you also notice the word, the letters, uh, the suffix like ing, which isn't a lot of words. That's going to start to appear more as you do more word training. So at this point, word training will will help you at a higher speed, at a higher uh, speed that being the first drop down here, will help you immensely to develop a vocabulary of Morse code words. This is going to take the longest time. It's obviously there are many, many words in the English language, but in ham radio parlance, there are very, very few words. If you're just doing QSOs like DX, it just might be a call sign, RST, and a 7-3. In a contest, same thing, but in, a, in a, an actual QSO, Let's see what an actual Q QSO might look like. In a QCC has, has some basic fictional QSOs that effectively show basically everything that is communicated in a standard Morse code conversation. It's very straightforward. This is their call sign from my call sign. Good morning, thanks for calling. Your RST is 599. That's the standard signal report in Kittening, Pennsylvania, Kittening, Pennsylvania. That's their, that's his location or QTH. Name is John, John. A lot of these things get sent twice that you really want to use down for the log. And then how question mark is, how do you copy me? Um, AR means back to you, or you can send back me to you, literally. Uh, N3AQC, their call sign from DE, K3WWPK, meaning end of my transmission. I think AR actually means in the transmission and K means your turn, something like that. You'll notice there's a lot of massive shortenings and there's a huge library of small phrases called CW abbreviations that uh, really shorten up the words. 7-3, for example, is best regards. ABT, AGN, ANT, BK, these all are all very, very commonly used and it shortens up what you have to know. And so. Uh, working on uh, these kinds of words are, are really important to improving your proficiency in a Morse code conversation perspective. Now, if you're in a Morse code net, um, they send these things called QTCs. And it just so happens that LearnCW Online has QTC training. In QTC training, um, this is more of a European thing, uh, but it's really interesting to, to use this uh, method or use this program. Uh, use this part of the site because now you have a lot of information you need to put in different boxes. Um, a number, a time, a call sign, and a serial report. And when you click pay, play, you'll get those sequentially. Number, time, call sign, serial. Number, time, call sign, serial. Time, call sign, serial. So on and so on and so on and so forth. And um, it's this is really good for in a contesting perspective um, to improve those chops. Additionally, call sign training. Once you learn most of the characters, you can start doing call signs. It also has plain text training. You can select from uh, proverbs and fortunes and um, to uh, decode uh, whole paragraphs. And you can use that to improve your word and your context recognition. One of the things I mentioned earlier is that you might not need to know all of the characters in a word because say for the word apple, if you have A-P-L-E and you're missing that one word in the one letter in the middle and wonder what it must be, you can generally surmise that the word was apple. But if you miss too many words, maybe not, but then you can contextually like put together, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, the blank tasted good. I like my blank from Washington state. He must be talking about apples. Additionally, if you want to do, um, 
your own arbitrary text, this is where you can put this in. If you go to the smrcc.org.uk website here, over here are simulated QSO texts. You can take these, a copy, and paste them in, and set your speed to what you want. And at this point, you should have all the tools you need to learn Morse code and become proficient at it using LCWL. But that's not all. The number one thing you will always hear from everyone telling you when you ask, how do I learn Morse code, is get on the air. Nothing cements the Morse code quite as good as stressing, your, stressing over a QSO on the air, sweating bullets, shaking immensely, than actually making a QSO. And if making a QSO and calling CQ is too frightening for you for in the beginning, then it might be wise to go and do something like a, uh, a contest where you can answer CQs from other stations. The, the exchanges are expected. You know what you're about to receive. Um, and uh, you, can, you can use crutches like CW senders if you're not as fast as sending, but you use your head to actually figure out what the call sign is, what the exchange is, etc. There are slow speed contests, the SKCC, Straight Key Century Club, they regularly do slow speed. CW Ops also does slow speed contests. Uh, after the end of every CW Academy session, the, the new graduates, if you will, they have a slow speed CW competition. Another option might be just to listen uh, and to also just to get a feel of what actual on-air more sounds like. And you can do this in a number of ways completely without a ham radio. One of the ways is web SDR. There are many online web SDRs out there that you can use uh, for free. And it's a really good way to tune around the bands and listen to CW. If you uh, go to um, 40 meters between 7030 and 7060, that's usually an area where a lot of slower speed operators hang out, towards the upper ends of the band. The lower you go and into the extra portion, you get higher speed operators. But here, you can just tune around and find anything. Here's a really strong signal that just appeared. And generally, these are at a conversational speed, 15, 20, 20 or less words per minute. A lot of times they're using uh, wide spacing um, because they're learning just like you and me. And what I like to do here is pull up something like Notepad and try to decode what they're sending. And you notice this is real ham radio. Like this is a real radio somewhere. This one particularly in um, Pennsylvania, I think, or New Jersey. I forget where. Uh, yeah, Pennsylvania. And you'll actually hear QSB fading. You'll hear uh, QRM and all that stuff. So this just trains your brain for the actual sound of it. Here's another strong signal that looks pretty slow. And I really like doing this if I'm at a computer. I can also put this on in the background and it gives me a, it's a really nice sound too. It's just this aesthetic. Put this on with some slow chill beats and it's almost like you're learning Morse code by osmosis, but that's not how it works. That's not how any of this works. Don't think that just listening to Morse code will magically give you the Morse code power. You have to actually do it. Do it! Just do it! So hopefully that gives you all the tools and information you need to learn Morse code. So stop asking and just do it. 73, thanks for watching and I'll see you on the air.